Okay, here it is. I've made my uh, uh, inertial device, basically based of, on the Sandy uh, Sandy's kit design, but actually is not Sandy's kit design. Uh, it's Sandy's kit lookalike. There are similar similar concept already published right there on the internet but uh, this one is rather different I will uh, proceed with the explanation of its function and then we will do a simple test uh, this is a uh, like not optimized model I just actually I just completed it so let's see what it is it is actually a shaft that is rotating over an axis. It is a hollow shaft and it has input current input it goes over there through a slip ring. You see that slip ring doesn't move and transfers the the signal into the into the shaft that goes to two brushless motor actually they are quadcopter motor motors that are controlled through electronic SSC electronic controllers and it's a server controller bought on the internet a very cheap one uh, so with that controller I can control the speed as you can see the speed of those brushless motors on the other hand there's another motor right here which is a brush motor that turns the whole system around and this motor is controlled by a servo controller so here it is what that one does uh, no, I guess I guess it, it disconnected let me just reconnect that one So, if I rotate this axis while, while I spawn, while I spawn these uh, these gyros, then there will be a procession. Procession. So these gyros will process to some extent, and because, uh, as you see, there's no springs on them. On them, there was a also there's a chance for to install a spring, but at the moment there are no springs. What is happen, happening? When I rotate the whole device and I start rotating these discs, they start to process to some degree. They don't process completely because the centrifugal force of the arms keeps them doing that, so they will go to a certain angle. After that, I stop the rotating of this uh, disc, so the procession stops and the arms go back. So there's this swinging action. This swinging action actually is not very strong because this disc, the mass of the gyro is not very big. That's the that's the drawback of this design. I need a bigger mass, weight, and bigger motor. So the procession, the strength of the procession be bigger. The idea behind this device is this. So when this thing rotates, and I start rotating the disc, the procession moves the arm to this position. Now, 
we know that the precession is inertion less movement so this movement for example if I, if I move arm this one because of the law of the action and reaction the Newton, third Newton's law, law the whole device as you see it is position on two rollers so if I do it this the whole device will go there over there but the thing is that with the precession it's inertia less there's no inertia so the precession you show it is a science fact it's not my theory it's a precession has no moment of inertia so this moment this movement caused by precession will have no moment of inertia on the other hand when I disengage, so when I engage the engine, it will move. It will move like this, okay? And when I disengage it, the centrifugal force will bring it back. And this movement back will actually have inertia, so we should see some sort of movement. So let's just test this device. Here it is. We will start rotating the arms. Some constant speed at the moment. Let's see. That's the speed. And then now we we'll control the speed. You see. So we. Actually, there is a there is a resonance to it when where actually the whole rig moves a little bit. You gotta you have to take my word for it. I'm sure I would tweak tweak it around with time, but that's the general concept. In general thing is with this rig I have uh, two possibilities for uh, for uh, control the first control of course is uh, this controller which controls this motor controls the whole axis and the other one is this controller that controls the motors so i believe with experimentations 